This is Retro Rambling, an audio podcast discussion about all things retro, with your host, Cyrus Martin. Well, hey everybody, it is me, Cyrus. Welcome back to Retro Rambling, the show where we talk about old crap. And uh, that involves uh, retro culture, tech, nostalgia, and interviewing some people that I know from around the community who I've become friends with. One of which is a man who has apparently in eaten 2000 panda meat sub sandwiches. I'm not sure where this name comes from. Panda sub 2000. How are you doing? Tell us about yourself. Who are you? What are you? What the hell is this? I am the official winner of the 2000 panda subway sandwich contest. Uh, you got it. You hit the nail right on the head. So actually, I don't think there's anything much more to talk about. So I, it's been awesome. Thank damn you it. so much for your time. Uh, I blew my load too early, as they say. <laughs> and speaking of blue, uh, yeah, blue. You you <laughs> are known in around my parts, as they say, as the the uh, the winner of horse racing with the blue horse uh, from. Yep. What was it? The first one we did or the second one we did? The first one. I am the first official winner of the most fantastic. I love that horse racing show that you do. If people out there have not seen or heard of it, they need to change that now. Don't listen to this. Immediately jump and watch the original uh, horse racing episodes. Um, Yeah, I won the first round. Uh, The second round uh, I lost. And the third round, your daughter actually beat me, um, which which was a little bit of an upset because I really thought I, I was going to have a comeback. Um, but she dominated that last quarter of that episode, like where she just came back from nothing. Remember, like, I think we yeah. thought she was going to be out for a minute and then boom, just like the horse that she bet on just came from the bat from the back into the lead. And she, uh, she had victory. That Look, was an amazing, amazing show. I, I can't say the circumstances that involved exactly how that comeback happened all i know is it was amazing and it certainly was not rigged it was not rigged in any way (laughs) (laughs) yeah i had a feeling that the uh the father-daughter situation may have something to do no no if it wasn't look if it was on any other console than the og in television it might have been rigged but on that sucker i mean there's no way to to I can't even do anything about it. It's just, it is what it is. The, the outcomes are what they are. So, but yeah, but that was, a, that's that. I love that show so much. You got to do more. of. We had a great time, you know, and I, I will, yeah, we'll do more. And uh, hopefully you can show up because it's really not horse racing. If you're not there, you know, um, can I just tell you real quick, the, the best part of that show is the part you don't get to see it being on the other end where, cause there's a delay, at least in my experience, there is always like a, solid 30 second delay so you're like hey panda what's your bet and i've i've already typed it because <laughs> i'm so excited and then you're like well i guess panda doesn't want like no no i i typed it 40 <laughs> hours ago still coming in uh, uh the, yes, the, the delay is a little bit of an issue but the wonders of the internet every you know yeah yeah it's 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 hilarious the last one we did i remember one of the guys was like he would he would respond he was already on a, his own delay and then we were on a wow. delay and it just made it even crazier it was, it was yes nuts. i remember that yeah yeah it was like a really long delay it was like a, he really was like four or five minutes <laughs> yeah and speaking of yeah. a really long delay we are really delaying you telling us who wow. you are what who are you explain who am I? Ooh, so i I run a channel called Pandas of 2000. The goal of the channel is to mix um, a narrative uh, sci-fi comedy series I wrote back in 2017. I wrote the full series out in 42 episodes. uh, And I merged that narrative with um, games. So I try to take a, you know, uh, let's say a Resident Evil game and tie that into the story that I wrote. Mm. So it's kind of this hybrid you know, um, sci-fi comedy show with a game documentary kind of feel, and as well as I do other stuff on there, but that's the primary focus of the channel. I've ever since I first met you, you have just 
blown my mind with your ability to create these amazing like graphical displays these videos with all these cgi effects and just crazy amounts of stuff how are you doing that are you like uh in league with satan like that's what we need to know like how is this possible so you, you again you hit the nail on the, on the head again uh <laughs> yes! i do have a deal with the devil i do um, <laughs> who gives me the ability to have subpar graphic ability um, <laughs> um yeah no i actually yeah i do I do literally everything, um, I, everything from the writing to the voice, oh, geez, uh, that, acting to the, the ego on this guy, the acting <laughs> itself, <laughs> to uh, the set building, the environments, the everything, the directing, y- you name it. And that yeah. really just comes out of, you know, not having friends. <laughs> so it just, no, just, but in, in, all, in all seri- in all seriousness, the in seriousness in that yeah, stuff, in that thing, um, yeah. like. Where did you learn to do what you do and how do you, well, you don't have to give me two specifics here, but like yeah. in general, like how did this come to be? Like, cause it's really fascinating what you do. Well, thank you. Uh, it, 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 like everything I, I'm, I'm self taught and it, it comes from just a need to make things. So um, normal people, they have lives, they have social lives, they have significant others and children. They've done amazing things with their lives. <laughs> me, mm. um, no matter where I am, I always have these ideas and these these images in my head that I need to to get out. And and ninety nine percent of the time, I don't know how to do it. Uh, but I will sit at a computer or I will sit with a camera until I figure out how to make that. And so this show is exactly that. Um, m- most of the time, I'm actually making a, a a mini behind the scenes thing where you can actually see the making of an episode where you'll see like I'll come up with a sequence and I go, I have no idea how I'm going to make this. I like, I don't even know where to begin. Um, but that's the fun of it. It's just figuring it out. And I, I can give you like even a small example. Um, right. So for instance, there was a, you know, a very simple uh, uh, example where, you know, I needed the afterburner of a jet, you know, just that fire that comes out. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know how to make these particles. I don't know how to do this. So I just w- took my camera and I filmed my stove turn on. Uh, and I filmed that and I just popped that on the back of the gym. And, oh, there, there's an afterburner that works. So <laughs> it's just taking whatever I can around me and, and figuring, you know, figuring how to make it. And so much of this show is just stitched together with guesswork, you know, perseverance and just love. It's just, you know, the desire to, to get the best thing out that I possibly can with my zero budget. What, what a, you said the show uh i'm having a hard time sort of understand i know, i know you we're friends but i still yeah. i still don't really understand your show like no one does <laughs> what is yeah. it, what is it like what yeah. do you what do yeah. you what are you creating for us what like just sure. like give me give me just a a quick synopsis what is the show yeah. so for the most part most people are, are supposed to be kind of in the dark because right now i kind of haven't revealed what this thing is supposed to be yet the gist of the show um it is a full series that was written it has a beginning middle and end it's it, most of it was even filmed back in 2017 um the concept behind the show the basic concept is uh on earth there's an asteroid about to hit earth and the government tries to figure out what they're going to do to destroy this this asteroid and for one reason or another and this is this is explained in the in the show eventually. I'm not going to give away why now, but sure. they decide that the best the best thing that we can do is to send a panda with a submarine backpack <laughs> and shoot oh. it at our and sh- shoot it uh, at this asteroid to knock it off its course with a crew on board. Unfortunately, they miss the asteroid. Earth is destroyed, and what this crew has done now now that there's no they're no longer on a mission they 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 failed what they're trying to do is piece back together the art and culture of earth they're finding all of the debris and remains of movies and games and things like that that they find scattered across the galaxy and they document them they review them they do this this, and that so the series um kind of takes you on this star trekian journey to find these relics let's say contra they find contra and it's that adventure to find it and then a review or a, you know, commentary on Contra. Um, and a lot of times that episode will then mirror, mirror 
what Contra is like. You know, so it's most likely a lot. It's like a running gun type of episode. That's the gist. Um, but there's a lot more to it. But that's the that's the gist. Of it. So it's uh, that's where the panda sub comes from. I get that now. Okay. Yeah, I was, was going to ask yes. you that. That was going to be one of the questions I asked you is what the hell's up with this name? Like Panda Sub 2000. <laughs> yeah. What is the 2000? Yeah. Is it just like, uh, you know? Yes. So the, the, everything, like every oddity in this show is, does have an explanation and it, and it actually is, it's a, I've always said from day one that my show is a bait and switch, um, that what you think the show is, uh, in the end is going to be something very different. That's on purpose. Uh, oh, 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 so oh. Gonna... there's a reason, there's a, <laughs> there's a reason why it's so, it's such a strange concept and so weird. What I can say is that, uh, you know, as a hint, and I know, I think you have a film background, correct? Huh? What? Yes. Yes. A little, yeah. right. well, not well, a little bit, a little bit. I did a uh, right. stuff. Yeah. Well, you're in film school, right? No, I went to. Oh, you weren't okay. I, I went to school for television, radio, broadcasting, and uh, I made a indie film, um, and helped with some other stuff. But no, I didn't go to film school. Okay, but you, but you made a. I mean, you made a movie. So that's something. Well, that's, that's, that's deb- it's, even better. That's debatable. I mean, was it a movie? <laughs> it was something. But we're talking Did you about point a camera at something. Look, this <laughs> this, this interview is over. No. <laughs> uh no yeah a little bit but i'm what i did well, I what i did was okay. like uh was like dinosaur like ancient uh obsolete crap compared to what you do what you do is on a um some other level like i don't even know how like i know what you're talking about as far as what you're trying to tell me and i've seen your behind the scenes stuff i still don't understand how you do what you do i still well, I was good, like the, the the reason why i was saying that the asking about the film school thing is because I, you know, I did go to film school. Um, I had done some film festivals. I, I got little awards here and there. And all of the stuff I always made was really experimental, heady stuff. So, uh, and all of them always had the concept of you go in, making the audience think it's this thing, and then it's something dramatically different. So the same is here. This is a very experimental show. And so what what I'm excited to show for show people is that, and I'm really hoping they get a kick out of where this goes is that it's not what you think it is now. Hopefully you're going to have a good time with it, but I really hope that people love what I've made for them in the end, that this is a, there's actually a, a kind of a poignant story to this. Um, so I, I, I hope people get a kick out of it. And as far as the effects and everything, I, uh, that just, again, comes from, you know, I have this show where it's about this ridiculous concept. So I had to, figure out a way to to make it work so i i think anyone can do what i can do uh so long as they have the drive to see it through i i'm mm-hmm. sure all of us do things in our lives that we're really that we push ourselves to achieve things that seem impossible to others and and um that's the same here i it's like a zero budget show i have no money uh, but i try my best to give you something that feels like it has some production value well, it's amazing. And as far as pushing ourselves to do things that seem impossible to others, I do that every morning in the bathroom. So anyway, <laughs> no, uh, what you do is really great. And <laughs> what, you, what you do is really great. I've seen some of the uh, other things that you've, you, you, you uh, have used some very interesting technology to achieve like your uh, mortal trivia with the panel. Yeah, uh, the game show thing. Like, how did you pull yeah. that off? Like, uh, you had everybody. Yeah, um, like, yeah, describe that a little bit. Well, hopefully one day you'll be on that because I'd love to have you on as a as a guest. Um, uh, so yeah, I I don't know if you've even seen the live shows. The live shows. Um, yeah, I built a virtual set. Yeah. Um, that that has you haven't even seen some of the things it can do. You can actually have uh, like there's moving sets and the people can move around in it and. All that other stuff. So basically, all I did was I built a 3D model of a set, uh, and then in using OBS, um, mm. I recorded some different camera angles and assigned them to different buttons and so forth. I'm not going to bore you to death with everything, but um, and thankfully, the, the guests on there were were really kind to me to let me experiment with them for a while to try and figure out how to do this. 
Yeah, we eventually got it up and running live, and it was a lot of fun. I just, I, to me, I just feel like the reason why I push so much on this stuff is, um, I just think, for me, I always want to give an audience the best thing that I can possibly deliver them. I, I want it to feel like a show as much as I, I you know, as much as I can. Um, I am because I am not much of a host or a personality, uh, so I have to try and make up for it with as as much bang for the buck as you can get. Well, I wouldn't say that, Panda. I think pretty much any time you're hanging out and and talking with people, I've watched, you know, you're on uh, shows pretty regularly with other friends of mine, and I see you, you always have something funny to say, something interesting to say. And uh, again, I think that's, right. well, I, like you were saying, <laughs> I, I, I think it comes from our understanding of uh, this type of medium, you know, the, our background in that um so yeah, I always enjoy watching watching you on these other shows and things like that. But your shows, well, thank you. yeah, well, it's you know you know it was amazing. You're so amazing. <laughs> uh, but uh, but on your shows particular, because like you said, you set up all this stuff. Like what program? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking a little inside baseball here, sure. Like yeah, yeah. like what program are you using to to do all your 3D rendering and stuff? Like what, how are you uh, pushing all that stuff out? Yeah, so I'm using a combination. Um, well, there's there's three things I'm using. Primarily, I'm using After Effects, mm. um, and, and then I'm also using Cinema 4D. And then at times I'll use um, like um, uh, I'll use some stock footage to pull. Like you know, for instance, you know, if I I can get stock footage of space, I'm not going to make space. That's just a, that's a what a, a way for me to <laughs> you know quickly get something done. Yeah, <laughs> I thought all that was in actual space. You have ruined the I, magic. I know. I damn it. I, I'm such a buzzkill. <laughs> God, thank, everything is a lie. I knew it. It is. It's all lies. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's it's fun to watch and fun to kind of like I said, sit back and sort of imagine. Like, I wonder how that is done, and I wonder, you know, like, this kind of stuff. But everybody that does YouTube stuff, uh, sort of. Uh, that's friendly with each other anyway, I think has like conversations yeah. behind the scenes to kind of pick each other's brains about things. I'm like, how the hell did you do that? And what's up with yeah. that? And that sort of thing. Yeah. So I've been meaning to do that. Well, if you ever have interest, um, and actually this can go for anyone out there. Um, if, and this is not a plug because it's actually a, um, what do you call it? A, what are the videos again? I'm, I'm blanking. I'm having a brain fart on YouTube when you don't, it's not, it's not private, but it's not, oh, it's like unlisted. There you go. Um, if you go to um, pandasub2000.com and you go to, um, I think, uh, like shelved videos, there's a, an After Effects tutorial that I made. Um, and it, I, I made it for just anyone who wants to learn some basic After Effects and, some, and how to make some 3D sets, some basic sets. But that's all there, free. Go ahead. I don't care if you like it or not. It's, it's, it's unlisted. And, so mm. go watch that and hopefully it'll uh, help or inspire you to make stuff. Have you ever had anybody approach you to ask if you could do stuff like that for them, like on their channels or for, uh, for like a specific video or, you know, maybe like a bigger, like, uh, I don't even know. I'm just guessing here. Uh, like mm. a, like a bigger YouTuber ask you like, Hey, could you do something for me? You know, as you know, sort of a, you know, a one-time thing or something like that. Has anybody ever? Um, no. Well, no. Uh, I, I've certainly, I've had the beginnings of those conversations where people have kind of asked me, how are you doing this? Blah, 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 blah. And they might be about to ask me to do something. But um, I always say, look, I'll be happy to show you some stuff. I'll be happy to, you know, give you some suggestions or, 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 or teach you a couple of things. Because I just think it's it's more important that the person makes stuff on their own. That way right. it, it has you know, it has their own uh, soul to it, if you will, um, as opposed to getting it from somebody else. So, and plus I'm very busy. <laughs> I understand. But, uh, yes, you are actually. <laughs> I, I've, yeah. I've watched a lot of your stuff and you do these videos where you're, you, you do a lot of these like games that are like, uh, like uh, the, the FMV games, the full motion oh, video games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what made you think to sort of hone in on that to as sort of like your, it's almost like your thing. Like you do yeah. that more than anybody that I've seen. What What is it about that appe that appeals to you so much? Yeah. Oh, it's easy. It's because um, <laughs> it's 
<laughs> it's like it's a very it's yeah it's a there's an actual real reason for it um because again i <clears throat> this channel was never supposed to be me in it it was actually supposed to be actors it just turned out it was going to cost me way too much to oh. to do that so i'm not a real person you know i i'm not very comfortable on camera or anything like that um so when i wanted to make a live show i figured well i don't want people just watching me play a game badly I would prefer to have a really fun, hilarious, interactive experience with people out there, but that's hard to do when you're just playing a platformer. Mm. So when I, I thought of like, oh, well, let's get like a super seducer, which is like a dating simulator where, you know, it's already a funny concept and there's choices. So you can, you know, it, it, it inspires conversation with the audience of like, okay, you know, here's four choices. What should we do? They're the, the chat's giving me jokes. I'm giving them jokes. It's a really fun time. So it just lends itself for interaction, which is why I absolutely gravitate towards FMVs. And plus, I just I just think it's such a quirky game uh, genre, yeah. you know, that, you know, back in like the mid to late 90s. Uh, and I just I just love it. I love how these FMV games are now so they're like super high quality. Like the video is like, cause back yeah. in the day it was, I mean, you know, it was pretty rough, but you know, you know it's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, a turbo yeah. graphics guy. So yeah, you know, <laughs> it, like a, a half second of full motion video, then it stops, then another half second and it stops. Yeah. Good time. Yep. Good time. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it, it is so much better. But, um, so let me ask you this. It, um, so it's a good choice for your video content that you do. Cause I, I see a lot of those videos, but overall as a gamer, so to speak, mm -hmm. what, what would you say if you had to guess, like, I don't know, just off the top of your head, what is your favorite type of game or genre or like, uh, is it a certain from a certain time period or console or piece? Like how would you describe your favorite type of games? It's always been narrative. So okay. I don't care, you know, like, you know, a geek story and great channel, by the way, amazing guy. He had mentioned portal. Um, now there is a, a puzzle game mm. with a narrative. I love that. You take mass effect. There is a pure narrative, you know, action RPG type type game that has a narrative, the old point and click adventure games, leisure suit, Larry, uh, King's quest, those games, a narrative. So, I, I grab focus on narrative. I've always loved storytelling, uh, so I love it in, in games. And what I always love, what, what drew me to games actually was as a kid, you know, I had always was writing. And uh, to imagine that you could create a world for your audience that they could actually explore and that didn't have a linear path was something. I ate up like that's what drew me to games was that idea of interactive storytelling where the player is the one that dictates and shapes the story. I, I was so fascinated by that. And even there's even little narratives, even in you play a game like Mike Tyson's punch out, just that, that narrative of you getting good and, and trying to beat that, those opponents and getting better and better to, to face Mike Tyson and losing over and over again, but having the perseverance to, to keep going that's a little micro story in itself. So all of that stuff is what fascinates me. So it's just the genre or the, just the idea of any kind of narrative experience in games. Did you, did you used to write a lot of stories when you were young, when you were a kid? Did you used to go? Oh God, I still do. Yeah. Yeah. I used to keep notebooks of story ideas and little pieces of stories. And I, I used to have like, I planned on writing like, a lot of novels when I got older and then I wrote two and I said, I'll never write another novel again because, uh, <laughs> what, what was, why was that? Well, it was enormous amount of work. Like I, sure. you know, the last novel I wrote took me two years and yep. nobody cared. <laughs> it was, Dude, like, I'll read them. I'd love to read them. Well, I, they're available. You can find them, but, Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. But, yeah, but, um, my point is, uh, I always loved to write, even if it was just short things, short little stories. I used to, me and my friends back in the day, we would keep these, uh, notebooks and we would play like these little, like, uh, hand drawn 
like uh you ever play like these uh you ever read these books that are like uh multiple choice like you get to choose your own adventure and stuff like that yeah so we would we like made up our own choose your own adventure stuff where we would we would do that kind of thing did you ever do like stuff like that or dungeons and dragons or anything like uh real like uh maybe i don't know something story driven like where you involved your friends and stuff like that or anything like that um sort well i I didn't ever do dungeons and dragons i did do those um choose your own adventure kind of books those i did all the time but no sadly i never i never really wrote with friends or did anything like that i was always again it was just it was my own thing and no one around me I, i think you you may have been very fortunate enough to have people around you that were interested in that stuff and so maybe if i had that i would too but no for me it was always um kind of solo affair uh and just writing constantly i still to this day have written i'm I'm writing all the time uh but i imagine i imagine it's a lot of fun to write with with a partner um Mm. uh, i I imagine even too that those two during adventures did you did you guys make any like did you make a book for each other to play or did you write them or did you write one book together no it was everybody like me and a couple of different friends we would have our own like uh we would do our own thing and then we would go through it with our friends like we'd sit down and be like okay so we'd have like a they would draw a map as they went through like a dungeon oh, nice. or something it was really fun it was long that's awesome this i'm remembering it as i'm telling you about this like when i was in like fifth grade we made a hand-drawn like uh choose your own adventure with a with they would draw a map and it was castlevania stuff okay. and and so it was like you go to transylvania and do you go into this room there's the you know you see the skeleton in there and all this kind of stuff it was fun it was a long time ago but you have something i'm not going to say it's the same thing but your uh your trivia stuff that you do where you have the panel on and, and everybody's involved and they're participating you're getting that audience participation thing going with that and i think that's what i love about doing the horse racing thing i see it also in what you do with that it's having the audience that that will enjoy the experience actually create the experience and exactly it's so much fun it really is and i hope you keep doing stuff like that i know it's for a lot of work and you're like you said you're very busy uh yeah well, we are. We're actually, I, I believe it or not, we, we're about to do a lot more of them. I, I'm kind of starting to schedule them out. And, you know, I think you may have seen the trivia ones, but there's um, there's actually even ones where we have a really great time of kind of a blue pill, red pill. Are you kind of familiar with, with that concept? Explain what you're talking about. Explain what you mean. So, yeah. Um, so, um, so, for instance, um, I'll put, we have the panel of people up there and I'll give... You know, on one column, uh, let's say it's uh, let's say Star Wars, and then the and that's that's red pill, and then the blue pill could be Star Trek, for instance. Uh, mm. That's a quick example. And the panel will discuss which one they would pick, which pill they would swallow. And the chat is coming in also and saying, "You're crazy! How did you take the red pill? It should have been the blue pill." And we have all sorts of these games. I even do like Pictionary um, with the chat having to guess my crappy drawings. <laughs> so it's just tons of um really interactive stuff with the chat because i just think if you're for me if you're going to make a live show that that audience in my opinion should be that that fifth chair or you know that other chair right. uh on your panel to not have them um i don't know to not have them there i think is is a disadvantage to 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 what your show could be so i love in bringing the chat in as much as i possibly can Anytime I do any kind of stream, I only, I, like, I can barely do anything other than I'm just talking to the chat the whole time because yep. that's, I mean, otherwise, I mean, I like trying to play a game and talk to people. I can't do that. Like I literally just, right. you know, it, it's impossible to do. I don't know how anybody does that. Like I'll see like my buddy, John, he'll, he'll be playing a game and talking to people and following both. And I'm like, how the hell yep. Is that possible? Like yeah, I don't know. And and to and to, not only to do that, but to actually be entertaining, engaging, yeah. you know, thoughtful at like 
that is a skill I certainly do not have. And you can't fake that. That's something right. that you either have or you don't have. And my hat is off to anyone that can do that. And, or even just people, I, you kind of do this too, where in a census, you just put on the camera and you just start talking. See, I would not be able to do that. <laughs> That's very tough for me. So I need a lot of things to distract people to go like, oh, okay, this is fun. <laughs> this guy's a bore, but the uh, the stuff around it is fun. <laughs> I think I think you don't give yourself enough credit. You're very you're very good at what you do. Um, let me, well, thank you. well let, let's let's dive into a little bit more about who you are and what you're into and what you enjoy. Um, so I know that you like video games. Uh, yeah, yeah. what kind of music are you into? What do you, what are you following or what, what kind of music have you historically preferred? Like, talk to me a little bit about your tastes as far as music is concerned. I'm kind of, uh, well, I'll, I'll try and give a more entertaining answer. Cause really what I listen to is film scores. I love oh, film really? scores. Yeah. I, well, be, because, um, if, if there's any artists out there, um, or, or crap, maybe even people go to the gym, they could understand that when you're writing or when you're creating something, the music is such a, a helpful, inspirational piece to you, where if there's lyrics, that's very hard to write and also hear lyrics. It's yeah. that's very hard to do. Um, so if you're writing a love scene, it's great to hear love music. If you're writing an action scene, it's good to hear that kind of stuff. But as far as, you know, your, your question more is about bands and stuff. Um, I typically always loved kind of like electronic rock sound. So mm. uh, bands like Garbage, Metric, uh, the Sounds, uh, those kind of bands uh, I've, I've, I typically gravitate, where they merge electronic with rock. See, I, I, the reason I ask is I don't know Jack about music, so I'm writing all these names down as you're giving me so I can go find them. <laughs> it's funny you well, mentioned... garbage you know. Garbage oh, you totally know. Well, I know garbage like nobody knows yeah. garbage, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but it's funny you mentioned the music, the soundtracks and stuff, because yeah. uh, I sp have always spent a, a ridiculous amount of time listening to symphony music and soundtracks and stuff sure. like that you know i this is how i would come up with stories like i would just sit close my eyes put on the headphones and just let the music make a story in my head and yeah. so that's my favorite thing to do is listen to that kind of music but yeah well, I, that's because you know because you're an artist at heart because like like I, I i don't know many artists that don't love you know film scores or classical music because mm -hmm. that sound helps fill in the 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 imagery uh that we don't have tangibly in front of us we only have our ideas and that music helps to fill in those gaps or helps inspire us to get to that you know next part in the story in our head that we need a little help getting to it's a perfect motivator it is uh, let me ask you this if you can just think of off the top of your head three soundtracks that you go back to that you really love just three really good ones not necessarily your absolute favorites or the best ones just three that you think of that you go back to on a regular basis um yeah okay well one is actually um the dig soundtrack that's an old lucas arts game uh the dig the dig attack the yeah the dig by michael land as uh, a composer okay. um you're you're not gonna like this one, though. You'll like the music. Uh, Attack of the Clones uh, has probably the best film score. I like that movie. Ever. I, I I'm I'm not opposed to that movie. I like that movie. You actually like really? Oh, okay. It, it's like uh, a it's like a cartoon. As long as you think of it as though you're watching a cartoon, <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I would also say like. Um, Let's see, under the skin to go on. Um, uh, I'll say even like Annihilation is a great one too. That's a really heady, surreal uh, soundtrack. Okay, the dig. But there's a million more, but yeah. no, it's okay. The dig, Attack of the You'll Clones. You'll love the dig. I I remember the dig, but I'm I don't remember it well, so I'm I'm trying to. You, know, you will love that, dude. That soundtrack is one of the, I always tell people it's the best soundtrack of all time. And it was for a game. Um, and especially back when this came out, it was like 95. 
to hear this beautiful symphony creating this gorgeous music, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't understand it coming off of like 16-bit games to to imagine this kind of music was amazing. Definitely listen to the dig. I remember the dig. It goes like this. So you own it. <laughs> That's Dick Doug. Never mind. Yes, you own it. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so all right, so Panda, Mary F. Kill, The Dig, Attack of the Clones, Annihilation. Okay. <laughs> all right, yeah, and so how do you define um how do you define the three categories? Well, kill I get. How, how do you do uh, marry and kiss? What's what's your no, it's, how do you it's define those? Mary F. Kill. Mary F. Oh, Mary F. Kill. kill. Okay. So how do you define the Mary and F? Mary's the best one that you love that you can't live without that you have to keep. And okay. F's one you like, but you know, you know, I mean, you may things aren't going to work out. Right. You know. Right. And then of course, okay. kill is your favorite. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's do. Um, I will marry Attack of the Clones. Oh. I will. I will. You F. Got, wait. The dig. Oh my God! Attack of the Clones is your is your favorite of these. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The music in that is amazing. So, um, and then I guess I would kill uh, Annihilation. Well, that fits. Fitting. You know, I mean, you're yeah, going. Fitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, what are you gonna say you know what is... okay well there you go so we're attack of the clones i gotta go back and it's i haven't seen it I'll in a listen while to that score. yeah and i gotta I'll listen. Just listen to the score you know the first part of that across movie, the stars just listen to that i mean across that's... the stars yeah oh my god yeah i was gonna say the very first part of that movie when the um, spoiler alert in case you haven't seen Attack of the Clones. <laughs> <laughs> when, when when the ship blows up at the very beginning, like yeah. it's su- it starts off like super dark, and you're like, oh my god, what's happening in this movie? And then it gets kind of like I said, car- Gordon, <laughs> uh, a little, yeah. little cartoony. Let's just say, uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's still not the worst. Uh, star wars by any stretch of the imagination no 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 you know, it's no. it's not bad it's just yeah kind of plasticky and kind of sure <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's yeah. okay it's okay <laughs> uh, i don't know how big a star wars fan you are um like have Almost you star wars was star wars was my everything man i mean well oh, yeah. the, the, i the, the lucas era i consider the lucas era my star wars uh star wars was everything it's why i it's why I wanted to become a filmmaker. It's it's everything. So Star Wars is extremely important to me, and I was able to 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 actually, um, I was actually able to go to Skywalker Ranch. I was able to see Episode Three with Lucas and ILM, and th- wow. so that was a dream come true as well. I don't know how much of that you want to talk about, but th- what what happened with that? Can you talk about that a little or? Uh... I can't talk too much because it involves work. I will okay. say that I did a project for 20th Century Fox, um, and uh, my background is in film, and um, and they happened to be very appreciative of that work that I did, and they asked me if there's anything you could, if there's one thing in the world you you we could give you as a gift. I said, okay, get me to Skywalker Ranch, get me to meet my hero, and let me see this final, what I thought would be the final film um, with them. And they arranged all that. So I got to fly out there and I did that. And um, that was a hell of an experience. I can't even imagine. I mean, that's like one of those, nobody gets to do that. That's crazy that you got to do that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was something else. Did you get to meet George Lucas? Like I did. I did. I, and I also got to meet the producer, Rick McCollum. Rick McCollum. Uh, Yeah. Who did the, the prequel trilogies. Right. Um, you know they wouldn't re- they wouldn't remember me for anything but for me it was a hell of an experience meeting them and all the talented artists and costume designers and everything out there was amazing again you if you understood well i mean i can tell you if you if you want to know i can really bore you with just how important star wars was to me um would you like to hear a very boring story <laughs> i would first i have one question uh what did george sure. lucas's hair smell like like <laughs> 
like daffodils and wet sex. I knew it. I've this is in my notebooks that I wrote back in the day. That was what I had written. That I believed that that's what it, okay. Sorry. Please go tell tell me the story. I want to hear it. Yeah, my totally lame my totally lame story um, was um, when I was a teenager. I actually drove out to uh, the Skywalker Ranch, and obviously I wasn't invited, so I was on the outside gates. And um, I stole a rock from, I put my hand through the fence and I stole a rock. And I said, I am going to return this rock one day when I'm invited to actually come here. And I was actually invited to go there and I returned the rock. Like that was my little, my little stupid sentimental thing. Because it was such a big dream of mine to, to meet this hero um, who had inspired me to, to want to make stuff. Like that was my everything. So um did you my little lame did you tell them or did you just like throw the rock as you were going in or like <laughs> like how did you do i threw it at lucas <laughs> i actually threw it at lucas and built him on the head yeah Bruce, <laughs> what you get you son of a bitch <laughs> yeah that was a direct quote um <laughs> so you were there Clearly, I, you were there hey uh yeah that surprise george lucas is joining <laughs> the uh podcast right now what? <laughs> oh, it was about uh, time no, I didn't dare tell them that. Be, um, you know, I, I certainly didn't want to get thrown out of the place with my lame <laughs> story. Um, How did you get it returned? What did you do? Like, did you just like? No, I just I had free reign on the property, so I was oh. there for the day. So I just I went back to the spot. I put it down. I oh, you had myself on the back. You put it back in so the. You did it, kid. You put it back in the actual spot you took it from. Well, from what I best remembered, oh, you know, it was. Okay. That, that, so I I went there in 1997. Uh, when I wasn't, you know, when I wasn't invited in 2005, when I was invited. So, you know, what was that? Seven or eight years or something like that. So I guessed where I put it, you know, where I got it. Did you write your name on the rock and set it down? I did with my own piss. I actually, <laughs> oh, I was going to say like, like on the, the Sergio Leone Western. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally not. <laughs> with your own piss. Wow. So yeah. that must've, uh, man, it must've been a big rock. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh that's fascinating did you ever used to watch uh i know you're like you said the original trilogy was kind of your thing well did, that, but all, all six yeah okay i got you did you ever used to watch those behind the scenes things where they would break oh, down yeah. like all the special effects and how they did them with the blue screens and yes. stuff it's fascinating oh, stuff yeah, yeah. yeah i couldn't oh, well th that stuff is I'm sorry, continue. No, I just said I couldn't believe it when I would see that stuff. That's all. That, you know, so the answer is yeah. Um, I ate that up. The the making of all that stuff I am fascinated by. Um, and you know, researched as much of it as I possibly could. Um, the the older stuff is far more fascinating to watch the behind the scenes. Like that, yeah. the craftsmanship, the ingenuity, the problem solving, the thinking outside the box, that stuff they were really doing some incredible stuff. Now, nowadays it's, you know, just how much horsepower behind the computer can you get and some, you know, other stuff. So back then it was amazing. I actually, the film school I went to, I actually got to, I don't know if you ever have edited on a flatbed before, but I got to edit on the empire strikes back flatbed, the actual flatbed they did for that movie. Really? Have you ever edited on a flatbed? No, everything we did was tape, you know, back in the day, we didn't do okay. anything like that um yeah well you have a greater appreciation for editing when you've got to splice stuff like that is i did i did torture i did splice reel to reel in the radio but uh oh, okay not but very you, much that's it. the same thing yeah not much you just have to do it for two minutes to gain an appreciation it just takes <laughs> about a minute or two. i don't think i ever gained any appreciation uh I, I, I don't gain appreciation. I'm very unappreciative. <laughs> okay you you're you you pissed on the rock <laughs> yes <laughs> Man, now now we have to go back to Skywalker Ranch and find that rock, and we'll know if we find it because it will and take a hot crap on it. Yeah, <laughs> the time I overturn this when I, you know, you don't. Uh, they're like, no, you can go ahead and hold on to that one. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, the the old school stuff with the models and the the way they had the cameras that would track around the the miniatures and 
and yeah. the crazy stuff that they used to have to do to to get but i'll say i'll say this um i love modern special effects they look amazing cgi and everything but i think a lot of people and you i know you probably feel the same way even being someone who dives into the world of creating computer animations and stuff mm -hmm. there's just something so special about that practical stuff you know the Agreed. I wish I. The only reason why I'm doing everything CG is because that's that's the budget and yeah. resources I have. But if I could build, you know, a set, or if, if I could build, you know, you know, I have little things like I have puppets on the show for that very reason, um, and miniatures for some things because it's fun to do that. But yeah. um, I agree, practical is always way better. Even even though sometimes it may look f fake in some areas. The fact that it's real to me sells it more, if that makes sense. No, I totally agree with you. Like, cause it's actually in the environment, you know, and yep. th there's just something when the actors are actually making eye contact with things and touching and Ooh, touching, you know what I mean? But like <laughs> when there's actual like physicality to things, it adds so much. It doesn't have to look better. It just needs to be mm -hmm. there, you know? So I completely agree. Yeah. But, completely th agree. but that's not to say anything. I mean, I, I definitely appreciate the greatness of what's able to be uh, achieved with modern tech. And that's why, mm -hmm. again, your stuff, first of all, what the hell are you doing? Wasting this crap on YouTube? Like, the, like <laughs> YouTube does not deserve this level of quality. I'm sorry, sir. Like, I'm, I don't know if you understand what YouTube is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 did people ever tell you that they're like why like you could be doing so much other stuff with with all this work that you put into things like why are you doing it here like you know what i mean sure. um yeah so there's a very long answer that i'm not i won't bore you maybe after maybe oh, after the show I yeah that's, with that one that's the, the, the long and short of it is well my my professional life i'm doing commercials i am doing a lot of stuff that's probably commercials that you've seen in the theater or on TV. Um, I've done those, some of those things. Uh, so I get to do that. The problem with that stuff is it's very corporate and I am not a corporate guy. I never have been. Um, I really am that starving artist guy that, that really believes in the work over the money. Um, so for me, this project, um, I never did it for money, for fame, for clip, none of that. I just wanted to tell this story very personal story. I know it doesn't seem it right now, but this very personal story of mine that I knew no one in no mainstream would ever want. Um, so for me, it was just a hobby. It's just something that I'm doing for fun. It's just like when you would write those novels, um, you didn't yeah. necessarily do it for an audience. Um, I just do the same thing. So that's why I'm putting all this effort into, into the show. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just, it's just fun for me. That's what I do with those magazines I'm working on these days. It's like, yeah, which is great. It's, it's so much work, but it's so fun to be able to make something, you know, and exactly. not everybody's going to like it. Some people are going to hate it, but it's about you just making something, you know, it's exactly, it's so fun. And it, I have nothing that's very hard. No, continue, continue. I, I just was going to say, I have nothing but respect for what you do because I know how much work it is to, I do a little bit of 3d stuff, but barely anything. I mean, if you've ever seen the intro on any of my videos, yeah. that's it. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> like, yeah, well, hey, but, that, but, but it looks great. Well, it's effective. you do on like what you do. I don't know how to do. And it's very fascinating to me. And I don't mean just the CGI stuff, but just, you you have a way of your humor being integrated into what you do you have a an obvious passion for the type of content the 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 editing style the sci-fi elements to what you do there's a whole lot going on and the choices that you make aesthetically for what you're doing and i find it absolutely fascinating to watch and i know that a lot of people do and i think you sell yourself short sometimes because i don't think you I don't, and I, and I understand, but I'm just telling you, I don't think you really appreciate the way so many of us really do admire what you do. So I'm very, oh, thank you. Well, I, nobody tells you these things 
because it's kind of a weird thing to say, right? But but <laughs> but, but you need to hear this stuff because it's. I think there's a lot of people that feel that way. So I, I, what I would I, what you know, what I've heard in a few places, which means more to me than than I could possibly describe, is that some people have watched what I've done and they said that they were inspired to to try and do something too, to push themselves into, you know, that they had this idea, they don't know how to do it, but damn it, they're going to figure it out. And to those people, I've DM them and I've said, dude, wherever I can help you to, to, to give you that extra, you know, little knowledge here or, or push there, let me know, because that is, that's amazing to watch people want to, to make stuff. Cause that's, that's what I love more than life. You said it before when you, when you're making the magazine, you love making stuff. And that's something that, uh, a lot of people don't have the pleasure of knowing what that joy is for people like us, that the act of making something is our, or at least for me, is my everything. So right. to watch someone else do that is amazing. Uh, and I don't care what they're making, as long as they're having a good time and, and it comes out of them, that that's, that's everything. So that I've heard, and that's, that is always great to hear. Well, I got to tell you, we were talking a second ago, um, I, I redid the opening uh, of my videos where now the logo is all in 3D, like all the mm -hmm. the yep. stuff, and that's completely inspired by you, absolutely. Oh well, thanks. I, that's awesome. Well, I mean, I'm just telling you, like uh, I was editing your trophy that I gave you, <laughs> <laughs> and I was my very well deserved trophy. Yes, yeah. your very well deserved horse trophy. You are the winner, sir. <laughs> Everyone agrees. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I was editing your trophy, looking at your stuff and just thinking, man, I really would like to do this logo for real, like replace the 2d version with the full, you know, polygonal version. And I just said, fuck it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to like, look up how to get all these fonts. And then I'm going to do it in my, uh, video editing suite. And it, yeah, it wasn't that hard really. <laughs> like once I got into it, I was like, okay that's not too bad i mean that's a far cry from you making spaceships flying around blowing up uh, you know stuff and <laughs> people flying around in space and all kinds of crazy stuff but, no, but that's it you nailed yeah. it no, continue. continue no yeah but i just saying like because i was looking at what you did i was like i think i can do this i think i, I think i want to try and yeah so you know i did again i know i keep saying you know of compliments for you here but thank you because um you know i see what you do i pay attention and i want you you make me want to do more stuff you make me want to be a better man <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute that's better than my that's better than all my girlfriends said that you, you make me want to hang myself so that's a much better <laughs> i like hearing that more that was from that was from as good as it gets with Jack Nicholson. I stole that. Yes, I know. Yeah. Okay. The other quote is what? If, the other quote is what if this is as good as it gets? <laughs> so that's kind of the opposite. I think I, I think you I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with with that when you you had an idea like okay I'm going to push myself to do these these title in 3D. You, you you know you were inspired for one reason or another to do so and then you found out oh actually when i apply myself to this and i put a little research it actually isn't that it isn't that hard that, right. that's exactly it once you have the idea of whatever it is you want to do and then you say to yourself i really want to get this done dude you'll get it done you will find a way you just have to have that motivator to do so and i think so many people they get bogged down by the, the mountain in front of them of, well, I could never do any of that. And yeah. it's like, no, man, you just, you got to look at that mountain a different way of just going, I can't wait to see the view from the top and think that way. And then you'll get, you'll speed up that mountain. It's just about, you know, your perspective. That's all. Well, I can't wait to see where things go with your channel. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do next with these, videos and the series that you're working on um i want to know this deeply personal story that you're trying to tell i want to i want i want this i need, I need all to be revealed i i can't take it it's too much <laughs> well but, i will i can share that with you after the show because i can't give away what the show is <laughs> not with that attitude no but no 
No, I got you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Tell people, if you don't mind, um, sure. again, how do how does everybody find Panda Sub Two Thousand? How does how do people find your channel? You've got a a website and everything. Like, how how do people find what you do? So yeah. Um, so my stuff takes a really, really long time to make, um, really long. So pe sometimes people think I have a dead channel, but really I'm actually working a lot. Give you an example. My, the next episode that's coming out in a month or two, that has been in production uh, since uh, in, for about five years now. So I'm almost wow. done with that. <laughs> yeah, almost done with that one. Um, and I've got two more hopefully following coming up after that. My point is... Because my episodes take such a long time, I recommend if you have any interest in my work, uh, because I'm posting constantly the behind the scenes of me making stuff. You know, I'm documenting almost every step of the way of what I'm doing. So that's mm. something that you can go there for. Otherwise, on YouTube, just Panda Sub 2000. Um, and I think the best place to start is right on that first page. It says, welcome to Panda Sub 2000. I would look at those videos right on that, uh, in that playlist to give you a good idea of, of what I do. Your description on your thing says the galaxy's number one space force housed inside a 500 foot Panda wearing a submarine backpack. We review, we, we, is it you or we, we review the, me and the team. Yeah. Yes. The okay. We review play, watch games and movies in a way you've never seen before. I should be doing this in a movie voice. Let me start this yes. off. <clears throat> Hang on. <laughs> the galaxy's number one space force housed inside a 500 foot Panda wearing a submarine backpack. We review play Watch games and movies in a way you've never seen before. Trust us, one out of ten dentists approve. <laughs> and I had to pay that one dentist too. That <laughs> <is> too <yeah. laughs> you guys, if you haven't checked out Panda's stuff, I don't know what to tell you because it's crazy. Like you won't believe the work he puts into stuff. It's 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 it really. There's nothing else like it on YouTube there's really nothing else like it anywhere. Like it's fascinating to look at, um, from a technical standpoint and from an entertainment standpoint, it's hilarious. So check out Panda stuff. You're on other shows too. I see you all the time. Uh, yeah, because I'm trying to be on as many things as I can, because again, I don't want people thinking my channel is dead. <laughs> I'm doing so much work behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, no, so I, I try, you know, I've, I've been on, I've been on a million shows uh, as yeah. much as I can. And I appreciate you coming on this one. Absolutely. And yeah, this is great, man. I really appreciate it. Well, it, dude, absolutely. I am so glad you wanted to come on and it's so it's been an enormous amount of fun hanging out with you. And it always is when we hang out and hopefully we can do this again in the future. And I, I look forward to seeing you with the riding that crazy blue horse one more time at the next <laughs> television horse racing. I will have my revenge. I will have it. <laughs> I did not often pray to you, Crom. <laughs> Grant me revenge. Uh, anyway, my daughter may have something to say about that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, ultimate shooter. You reckon with. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Panda. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you. We, everybody thank you for listening hopefully you've enjoyed this like i said check out panda's stuff until next time i'm cyrus and i'm panda yeah. no no <laughs> nobody ever gets it don't worry you're supposed to say and i'm panda uh, and i'm panda it, i set everybody up don't worry it, me and picky <laughs> gamer came up with this thing a long time ago for game rambling and we just got into a habit of doing it and i forget that other people don't and know. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried this out on, I think it was John or Nick. I can't remember who it was and they didn't get it. And I was like, Oh shit. Of course they're not going to get it. Nobody else gets this. That's <laughs> it's like a habit that I would get into. But anyway, one more time. Here we go. So until sure. next time I'm Cyrus. And I've been Panda. <laughs> and I'll see you later. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for checking out Retro Rambling. 
an audio podcast discussion about all things retro. If you enjoyed it, then check back soon for more. See you next time.